Areas of interest in the Pacific on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for November 8th. Would you believe it's been a full week without a tropical weather bulletin for various reasons, but we are back at this point and we are code blue for the Western Pacific, a system that we have designated. But as of right now, there are no active storms, just the remnants of pillar which are continuing in the Eastern Pacific. In the Atlantic, it's day 161 of hurricane season and we've not got anything marked at the moment. However, it is worth mentioning in the longer range, the GFS model is certainly keen on a substantial storm in the Caribbean, although no other models support that just yet. In the Eastern Pacific, we've got the remnants of Pillow, which to be honest are looking pretty decent, although not really very tropical, and a 10% area of interest behind it, which could become, is likely to become a low pressure area, but could become a tropical cyclone, but chances are very low. In the Western Pacific, we've marked a 30% area of interest over Micronesia, moving gradually towards the west, low latitude at this time. There's also another invest that we haven't marked, but that's the area there over the southern Philippines delivering rain. And in the North Indian Ocean, we've not got anything marked here either, uh, but there is uh, enhanced rainfall over southern India, Sri Lanka, and along the west coast of Sumatra. Elsewhere, the basin is quiet. Into the Southern Hemisphere, and we've got a 20% chance that we've designated for the South Pacific, not far from that Western Pacific counterpart on the other side of the equator. That could become a repeat of Lola, although a much weaker one. That's what's currently being implied by the model runs next week. Let's take a look at the latest satellite imagery, although there's not very much to look at today. On the left hand side, there's the remnants of Pillar. You can still see that it's uh, rotating and a little bit of convection blowing up on its southern periphery, but really it's not going to amount to much. To its east, a little bit of rotation starting to increase now uh, for that second system, which could end up taking its place. Now this is a view of the Western Pacific system, that's the eastern one in the West Pack. Um, and there it is, it's starting to get a little bit of rotation going, but it doesn't seem to be well centered at all, not very stacked, and convection is obviously quite lacking as well. Uh, but indications are that it will have a shot at reaching tropical storm status for a brief period later on this week or at the weekend. In the Southern Hemisphere, well, this next one hasn't really formed yet, and we're looking at mainly blue ocean there with some convection moving off towards the south. Well, I'm not convinced that we've got the low pressure area of interest just yet, but I do expect that we will start to see it in the next 24 hours, and then we'll have something to properly track just as it moves along the Solomon Islands there, which is what we're looking at off to the east of them. Sea surface temperatures remain respectable in the eastern Pacific, up to and above 30 degrees in some parts, particularly where Otis made landfall. In the Atlantic, it's still looking okay in a few spots, the Caribbean most notably, uh, and in parts of the open Atlantic, but it's really starting to fall away in the Gulf of Mexico and off the Gulf Stream. Uh, so it is those very low latitudes, and the Caribbean really is where it's going to be at, if anywhere. Still over 30 degrees in a few spots there. In the Western Pacific, there's still plenty of uh, energy down there in the deep tropics, in the open ocean, and in parts of the South China Sea off the west coast of the Philippines, above 30 degrees Celsius as a rule, and up to above 26 degrees, still just off the shore of Hong Kong, and for parts of Taiwan and the southern Japanese Ryukyu Islands. Bay of Bengal looking very good around Myanmar, a little bit cooler to the west but still looking decent and in the Arabian Sea the warmest waters are off India. In the southwest Indian Ocean those temperatures really warming up there as well off the coast of Madagascar and the Masserine Islands and in the Australian region those temperatures up to above 30 degrees in one or two spots as well, the Gulf of Carpentaria also warming up. South Pacific, those temperatures increasing to the south of Fiji and 26 degree isotherm not far now from New Caledonia. 
Compared to average, it's the South China Sea that comes out on top in the Western Pacific, up to 3 degrees above normal. The open ocean, 1 to 2 degrees above. North Indian Ocean is above average as well. The Australian region, not so much, and the South Pacific is hit and miss. Southwest Indian Ocean is looking very decent, especially around Mauritius. The East Pacific obviously showing off that El Nino and the Atlantic, it's the Caribbean that is quite a bit above average as well as the subtropical Atlantic towards the east. Oceanic heat content really only favours the Caribbean now at this point, especially from Haiti to south of Jamaica and possibly towards Honduras. In the eastern Pacific there's still one or two little spots left that could provide some a little boost for some potential activities and in the western Pacific still looking decent in a few spots but quite away from its peak now. Well let's check the computer models, this is the GFS and you'll see what the remnants of pillar there on the left hand side and this circled the other area of interest that has a brief sp uh, spell there, 9th, 10th, maybe the 11th of November where it could become a brief tropical cyclone. It doesn't look like that will happen at the moment but I think a 10% is justified especially as it may acquire some rotation there. We're mainly looking at probably Friday and Saturday. Uh, or maybe Thursday and Friday actually for its potential development. Uh, this is the Western Pacific, so this is the one that we're already tracking. Uh, that system which moves along quite low latitude, doesn't really get going, but could become a brief tropical storm there as it moves towards a general westerly movement just slightly north of west. There it is again, briefly reaching tropical storm force winds marked in green. Um, and then it really loses its way as it moves on further towards the west. Now this is the southern hemisphere, this is off the Solomon Islands, the other area of interest that we could be watching, and there it is really starting to take shape and get its rotation by the weekend into early next week and some really strong winds blowing up on its northern side before it manages to get its circulation properly tied up, and I still don't think it does by the end of that five day period, it nearly does by that point, but I think despite the strong winds there, it's probably not a tropical cyclone within that five day period. Now we're looking at rainfall expectations for the Caribbean region. If we do see this potential tropical cyclone, although I would say it's very low chance right now with other models not supporting it, but even if there was a tropical disturbance, this could still be applicable with high rainfall values in a few areas along the coast of Honduras and Nicaragua. It could reach 6 inches or more, 150 millimeters. In Jamaica, it could reach 10 or 11 inches there, that's above 250 millimeters. On the eastern tip of Cuba, it could get up to 4 inches or 100 millimeters from this potential tropical disturbance that we don't yet have any uh, chances for. But there it is, could be another substantial rainfall for Central America, of course it's had several recently. In the longer range, day 5 to 10, well this is where you can see it start cooking and the uh, system first develops east of Nicaragua and then really blows up quite quickly and becomes a substantial hurricane by the time it reaches Jamaica, plows through there and becomes stronger before reaching the southern coast of Cuba, not far from Guantanamo, and becomes a substantial, probably category 2, hurricane there as it moves up there. Uh, quite reminiscent, I would say, of Sandy actually, track and intensity wise, but the rest of the track doesn't go Sandy's way, so I wouldn't be worrying about that. Now in the Western Pacific, we're marking three areas here in the longer range for consideration. The first one is the one that we're already tracking that's about to reach the Philippines there, briefly becomes tropical cyclone again. And then two systems potentially developing there much further towards the east. One of them at quite high latitude for the time of year. Uh, but the Western Pacific can't be ruled out for this kind of thing. It's a very messy situation and I would say a very uncertain one and perhaps that might not occur yet. And in the southern hemisphere we have the continuation of this storm becomes a genuine tropical cyclone there, passes east of Vanuatu so it doesn't quite take the same track as Lola and it's much weaker of course, only getting such strong tropical storm status by the looks of things and then it really dies off as it reaches the southern Vanuatu islands and starts to dither and maybe move slightly towards the southwest near New Caledonia and dissolves. But of course that is getting into the longer range. 
That's all the serious stuff done. Scan the barcode and that will take you to the Force 13 store where you can take a look at all of our products and our full season individual storm animations on request. And are still waiting for Hone t-shirts, which looks like they're going to be in stock for quite a bit longer yet. Well then, in the silly range, continuing to watch this Atlantic storm, very powerful hurricane there, stalling over eastern Cuba, and then swiveling towards Haiti and moving through Hispaniola, and then off towards the northeast, and moving quite slowly by that time, and then speeding up later on in that run towards the end of the 16th day. Now, a word of caution on this run, um, it's very unlikely at the moment, uh, and let's not forget that that previous area of interest that had a high chance of development at one point in the Caribbean, well the GFS wanted that to be a category 5 and that never formed at all, so I wouldn't be hedging bets on that one. In the Western Pacific, those two systems continuing to uh, lurk there, and one in particular gets quite strong and moves through the Mariana Islands as a typhoon, then becomes a major. That's a really high latitude major typhoon, by the way, for this time of year, so I would uh, advise heavy caution on that one forming, or at least getting to that stage, but it does make landfall there near Saipan and Tinian, probably becoming a major as it does so, and then continuing northwest. Well. You can talk about all of that on our Discord server, discord.gg slash force13 for tropical weather and general weather chat with thousands of members from around the world. On this day, 15 years ago, it was probably a lesser remembered storm of the Atlantic, but a strong Category 4 at that rate, Hurricane Paloma, which was in the Central Caribbean and really caused issues to the coastline of Cuba, if I remember rightly, as a very powerful storm and it got retired, of course. We also had Tropical Storm Maysac, which was blowing up extraordinary cloud tops at this point, uh, almost halfway over the South China Sea to the west of the Philippine Islands, and it was a moderate to strong tropical storm. Back to today, if the Atlantic can squeeze out another storm, its name will be Vince. In the Eastern Pacific, even less likely, but the next name is Ramon. And in the Central Pacific, dare I say, even less likely, and the next name there is still Hone. 75 storms so far in 2023. The next name in the Western Pacific is Jellowat, and in the North Indian Ocean, it's Midhealy. And by the way, look at how quiet the Western Pacific has been this year, just 15 tropical storms to its name. In the Southern Hemisphere, the next name in the Australian region is Jasper, the Southwest Indian Ocean, Alvaro, and the South Pacific, the next name is Mal. That's all from tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow night.